Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you today? I can see we have a good quorum at this point in time, and I think it's safe to start. Um, good evening, everyone. I see you on the chat. Good evening. We are excited to have you, and uh, we're excited that you could make it today. Good evening, our Facebook family, and uh, it's also good to see you. And uh, tonight, we are about to start a session that we're discussing National Social Security Fund. And, uh, oh yes, Lillian, good, good uh, evening to you too. Yes, I am CHRP, absolutely. And it's, it's really um, amazing to be here tonight. And uh, of course, we have quite a number of questions, including how do we implement this uh, NSSF how do we do it for casuals as well? How do we do it for our, our house helps at home, our domestic workers, among other things? So tonight we seek to answer quite a number of questions. Please feel free to engage on the Q&A uh, and also on the chat. And uh, of course, we will upload the recording on our YouTube channel today. I, I mean, not today, in about two days, but uh, this one, uh, if you want to catch up later, you can. And uh, of course, we are hosting Mr. Fred Waswa, who is also having a physical uh, session on Friday. So in case you have unanswered questions and you want to sit and do them practically, then you can join them on Friday at uh, Pradeen Azu, Azure, Azua, I don't know which, uh, uh, Potato Potato, whichever school you went to. But yes, uh, it's exciting to be here. My name is Grace Nzula. And I am, uh, I work with the Tara Solutions. I'm an HR consultant and trainer with the Tara Solutions. And of course, uh, most people know me as the moderator of choice and I am excited. I am very, very privileged and uh, honored to be here. I am in Mombasa. So for those of you in Mombasa, we can have coffee. And uh, of course I'm here with my co-hosts. I have Kevin and Catherine Sidandi. Kevin, you can uh, say hello to the people and then we can kick off. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever you are. <laughs> I had missed everyone. And as always, I told you from the beginning of this year that it's going to be a bang. Today, uh, as everyone, I know we have many HRs, we have many employers, and also we have employees who are excited and waiting to hear about NSSF. This one is is going to affect all of us. So please stay tuned. And I hope that your questions are going to be answered. Back to you, Grace. Thank you very much. And of course, we have our sign language interpreter, Madam Catherine Zidandi. Catherine, it's really awesome to see you. And uh, you look lovely tonight, as always. And uh, Kevin, we missed you last week. Last week was so much fun. We were dealing with workplace relationships. Honey, <laughs> eh, money, honey in the money. Eh? how you get your honey in the money and i'm surprised yeah a lot of bankers uh but it's the small survey that we we i have done most bankers marry each other from their offices including my other good friend i mean, will not be mentioning names but yes and i think my neighbor and quite a number of people i know uh, who are bankers end up marrying each other i don't know what happens in the banking industry you guys are going to explain to us however uh tonight uh if you're joining us for the first time this is Get It Right with Atara Solutions. I repeat, this program is called Get It Right with Atara Solutions. We seek to demystify issues in employment and entrepreneurship. And of course, we are on a mission to change the world through information. And we do this every Tuesday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. here on Zoom and also on YouTube. I mean, on uh, Facebook. But do not worry, in case you join us late or you have missed any of our former sessions, you can check them out on our YouTube channel. And of course, you're free to join our WhatsApp group to be updated on what is happening or coming through in Atara Solutions as we go along. Uh, this year, we started with uh, your financial uh, for 2023. Please make sure you catch up on that. We have sessions from last year that we covered from 18th of January to 22nd of November. And of course, we had done the same the year before. 
uh, in 20, we started in 2020 uh, June, and now we are in 2023, and we are very grateful to God, and of course, uh, thankful that you guys always make time to be with us, and we have some of you who have always uh, joined us. And of course, uh, not forgetting our partners, we do this in partnership with a number of organizations, and uh, most importantly, we have a partner in Kampala, Mr. Habat Zake. Uh, Mr. Habat, are you in the house? It's really, really always an honor to have you. Thank you so much for sharing our flyers in Kampala. Thank you for also supporting our mission in changing the world through information. And of course, we have Balcon Housing. Balcon Housing is a real estate company. Uh, they deal in buying and selling of land. If you have a piece of land that you wish to sell or you, have a, uh, you want to invest in a piece of land, then Balcon Housing will be your best choice. Then we have Stallion Construction Company Limited. As the name spells it, uh, uh, Stallion Construction is a construction firm. And uh, if you're looking to renovate your house or renovate your office, or you're looking to build uh, from scratch, or you're looking to partition your new office or your new home, then Stallion Construction uh, would be able to support you on that. Then we have Pathway Solution Services. Most of you have actually gotten a chance to train with Pathway Solution Services. They are a HR and training company. Uh, they have an LMS. LMS is Learning Management System, and they have quite a lot of information. I, it is an information load on their LMS. And of course, you get to get a certificate at the end of your training. And uh, last year, Frank was very generous and offered quite a number of corporates at uh, free sessions uh to their team so pathway solutions we thank you we 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 are really really uh honored to have you as one of our partners and of course we have the institute of pension management do you know they actually offer chrp classes i've seen somebody who says i saw you last year uh, during the chrp graduation yes i was there i was the moderator for the graduation uh, by hrm peb last year and of course, uh, if you wish to take your CHRP course, then Institute of Pension Management would be your best choice. Actually, for those of you who are enjoying taking classes, they have beautiful, beautiful parking, enough for everyone. And of course, if you wish to take online sessions, they have an uh, online option. So make sure you follow Institute of Ten Pension Management or get in touch with me and I'll be able to give you more information. And then we have Panessa Training Institute. For those of you who have a... Uh, 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 love for working with your hands and love working with wood and wish to become better carpenters so we have panessa training institute uh please join us we have saturday classes we have uh, uh private sessions where you get to choose the time you come cl to class so uh make sure you actually join us if you have a brother or a sister who's looking to study carpentry then we would be the best people uh yes and i'm saying we because i manage the institute and then we have weeklyn weeklyn is a carpet cleaning company it's actually a cleaning uh, company you can check them out on instagram uh, if you have a carpet uh they have a machine that cleans carpets within six minutes can you imagine they actually have same day delivery so if you have uh, a function don't wait for your guests to come in a dirty carpet or after they have left don't worry about it's going to be cold oh my tiles uh -uh. they pick your carpet today and they're able to deliver it tomorrow uh then we have suluhu mediation center i am a certified professional mediator i did a uh, course with them in december that was amazing it was on one of the best things i ever did for myself in december i mean in 2022 if you wish to become a certified professional mediator uh, then suluhu mediation center would be the best people to train with they actually have online sessions that take place for five days or they have physical sessions you can choose whichever it is that you want to join and then we have profiles international profiles international are offering a course they they do uh emotional intelligence they are the one-stop shop for psychometric assessment i repeat one-stop shop for psychometric assessments if you're looking for uh people to support you when you're recruiting then uh, profiles international will be there for you then we have el samia el samia is a conserv conservation uh center and a hotel located in naivasha oh my god they have beautiful grounds and the lake is just there the views are to die for and you actually see the lake from your room and you don't have to strain. You know the way you have to stand at the balcony? Ah, 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 ah. They have glass uh, doors that help you see. And then at night, the hippos come. The, the giraffe, not, not the giraffe, what do we call them? These black and white animals. Zebras. Uh, it's, it's just awesome. And uh, yes, of course, uh, there's a guard to help you at night. Don't worry. So if you're looking to take a, a vacation, a bikeation, whatever vacation with you and your people, or a solo vacation, when you just want to go and unwind by yourself, then you need to visit El Samir. 
Then we have Kapila Mintito, which offers uh, coastal snacks. They have uh, cashew nut, they have mabuyu. Their mabuyu is uh, one of the best. I've never tasted as good mabuyu as the uh, ones from Kapila Mintito. Then we have Purpose. Purpose is a technology company. We are looking to implement an ERP. Then uh, you need to talk to me and link you up with Purpose. And then uh, finally, I would like to welcome you to the Genos Emotional Intelligence course. We are looking to become a certified Genos Emotional Intelligence Practitioner. Then uh, there's a course uh, starting on the 15th of March at the cost of $1,500. Uh, whoever is on the call from Pro Profiles International, please share the more details. But other than that, please get in touch with me and I'll be able to shed more light on this. So uh, we appreciate you, our partners. Thank you very much for helping us and supporting us in making sure that uh, we are here. I see Ranuaweru, I say that Elsa may have best and most peaceful place to stay. I recommend them 110%. Absolutely. I love, love Elsa Mayer. The quiet, the, oh my God. All right. Uh, but unfortunately, we have to discuss NSSF today. Uh, Kelvin, Jerry, please, uh, maybe you can type your number or email me on the email you received the Nini from. And I'll be able to link you up with the with the carpet cleaners. Uh, Karen, if you're interested in CHRP, let me know. You can email me and I'll be able to share with you. Beryl says, I'm an online CHRP student at ITPM. It's the best place. Awesome, awesome. Ah, Grace Ndongo listening from USA. Thank you very much for joining us. All right. So on to the business of the day. Tonight we are hosting um, the group, uh, group, direct, eh, group chief executive director hey fred i can't keep up with these titles of yours but anyway uh he's my okay, author forget, long, forget yeah. about title. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes uh fred happens to be a long time friend of mine uh yes he has uh, we have supported each other in terms of growth and i'm really honored to be hosting you again uh if you have been wondering what to do with your pension scheme please go to our youtube channel and look for a topic we did called you retired when you started working it is one of those uh, webinars that actually changed my own life leave alone the lives of the, our audience you retired when you uh, started working is on our youtube channel but tonight fred we are confused and i say this with a lot of confidence and representing the hrs of this nation and uh, <laughs> Speaking for employers and employees, because I, I, I am an employer, I am an employee, I am a, a practitioner, I am a consultant expected to advise um, uh, uh, other companies. So my, my question is, uh, Fred, what is what? Kenyans are confused. I know Ugandans on the call are even wondering, Kenyans, you're about to be duped. Our money is getting <laughs> lost. <laughs> and then we are wondering, okay, so Uganda is losing money. And Kenya is increasing money. And we are the whole East African bloc. So where do we start, Fred? Please guide us. OK. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Grace. Uh, thank you, um, members and those who have, who have logged in. We really appreciate um, the opportunity for us to discuss administering the act uh, of NSSF 2013. Um, I think I'll just go straight uh, into the into my presentation. I know uh, we will have a lot of questions, so we want to just make sure that we address the questions earlier uh, or preempt them as much as we can. So um, let's go to the next slide, and then we can uh, make some progress. Yeah, I, I can see somebody talking about the appeal. Yes, there's an appeal which has been filed in uh, in, in Supreme Court. Uh, tomorrow there is, I think, um, a hearing or a serving or something like that. I saw something in the in, in the in the social media. Um, but as we speak now, we are we need to we need to prepare ourselves for 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 implementation. Uh, I, I I in my own view or, or from where I sit. Um, this is the best thing that can ever happen to this nation in terms of uh, saving culture, in terms of um, helping people to, to provide for themselves in retirement, um, and uh, in terms of uh, increasing coverage 
for those that who don't have completely a pension scheme. Uh, it's, uh, I was speaking to another audience and I was telling them that, that uh, only 20%, yeah, just take the organizations, companies established in this country, starting from SMEs or small to medium to large companies, large corporations, only 20% of those have pension schemes, you know, registered pension schemes with the Retirement Benefits Authority, only 20%. Either they have pension schemes or they're contributing to umbrella retirement benefit schemes. Uh, so 80% of our people don't have that opportunity. And uh, this NSSF, ideally, this act ideally helps people to improve their savings because we have only been saving 400 shillings. Now, what can 400 shillings do? Uh, and if you save over 30 years, you get something like about 800,000 Kenyan shillings at a rate of return of 5%. The question is, is um, what will you do with the 800, what will you do with the 800 shillings in, in 30 years? You buy a pair of shoes and ideally you have got your retirement and you're going, you're going, you're going to retirement, you will go to death. So we are, we are sending very many people um, to the graves after retirement just by you know, getting them to save only 400 Kenya shillings. Uh, so, so the NSSF Act came in place in 2013. Um, and uh, ideally, maybe we just go to the introduction. If ideally, uh, it's supposed to help us in terms of uh, understand, in terms of um, uh, improving on our, on our culture of saving. Uh, of course, initially, what the, the issue was, uh, the issue was how do we, how do we improve on our benefit that we take home? You know, from today you go to the we get 150,000 shillings. You've worked for 40 years. And you get 140,000 Kenyan shillings. You can't even take things to your to your rural area. Uh, how do we improve that? And then, secondly, the question was, how do we increase coverage? You know, how how do we make sure that more people actually get into the loop? Um, we go to a, a, a stage where we almost where we have almost made pension pension savings compulsory. Of course, in any government jurisdiction. In any government jurisdiction, you have uh, what we call we have what we call the first pillar, and the second pillar, and the third pillar. Usually, the first pillar is the national social security uh, is uh, provision. So it's the basic saving for retirement, and usually that basic uh, saving for retirement should provide you with a sufficient benefit to live on, you know, uh, at the lowest level. And then there is the second pillar, which becomes the occupational schemes, which com company schemes that are set up either by umbrella or by or by uh, uh, by occupational schemes that are set up by the companies themselves. Yeah. So that to augment the, the benefits that are provided under state. And then the, the third one is usually personal pension. So where the employee feels I have an NSSM, I have an occupational scheme, and I think I need to do more to be able to get my benefits up there. So the objectives of the new fund ideally is to provide basic social security for its members and their dependents for various contingencies, for various benefits, for various you know, structured benefits that are provided for in the act. Of course, as I've mentioned, increases membership coverage over the social security scheme and improves adequacy of benefits. As I mentioned that, um, uh, instead of getting your 150,000 Kenya shillings after working for, 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 for what, 40 years, for 30 years, at least with the, the benefit that the structure that has been provided, it helps to make sure that the benefit uh, increase keeps up with inflation. What does that mean? Is that today the benefit is fixed, the contribution is fixed at 200 Kenya shillings. So it has been this way since the year 2001. And yet between 2001 and today, inflation has gone up, you know, you know into double digits, yeah? Uh, the question is, how do you have money, only 200 shillings saving, and yet inflation has gone up this, this level? So the benefit you get is very small that cannot be able to provide you with a benefit, so with, a, with a, a better life in retirement. So improving of adequacy of benefits was the critical reason why the industry and NSSF and government said this needs to be looked at, yeah? And then it also provides a full opt out at tier two, tier two level of contributions for employers who have or are contributing to pension schemes approved and registered by the Retirement Benefits Authority. Uh, what it does is that you 
So one of the things that we have heard about our NSSF is uh, the trust levels are absolutely at the lowest peak, at the lowest level. So the question is, how do we, how do we tell people to send money to NSSF when people don't trust that very particular NSSF? That was the question that we basically was arguing around with the NSSF. And this act, um, we started discussing this bill in 2002. 2002. I remember that time when I was the secretary to the Association of Family Benefit Schemes. And, and uh, we have had a whole argument over it until we reached somewhere and said, okay, fine, we will increase the contributions to NSSF, but are very at a lower level. But we should add another level of contributions to go to private sector pension schemes that are better managed and better regulated, you know, so that we are able to have a confidence for people to save. You know, before the year 1997, before the Time and Benefits Act was put, was put in place in this country, I had done then administration for about eight years in the country. And I tell you the truth, the confidence levels even in the private pension schemes was at the lowest. Because people think that the employers will be able to manage their pension schemes until the time they retire and be able to get a monthly, I mean, a retirement benefit. But when RBA came in in the, in the, year, in the year 2001, which is the offshoot of the, the act, uh, then at that time, the industry was 150 billion in assets. And because of that confidence that there is a regulator, there is a structure which has been put in place to make sure the safety of funds of members, that confidence has created a, almost a 1.6 trillion of assets over the last um, almost 20 years. You know, we have gone up by 10 times in terms of uh, the growth of the, of, the, of, the, of the industry. Why is because of the confidence in the retirement benefits uh, uh, industry. So that's why we say, the tier two contributions should be opted out, out of NSSF into a private pension scheme registered and regulated and approved by the Retirement Benefits Authority. So that's one of the items that comes through in this very particular act. The fourth one, the, uh, the fifth one is, uh, the fifth one is provide a vehicle for self-employed persons to access social security for themselves and their dependents. Of course, you will notice, you will realize that the NSSF act pre-2013, pre Provided that uh, you can, you know, you 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 may you may register your employees, you know, all your employees in the scheme, you know, even if they are less than five, even less than five. But a must for any employer that has more than five employees. So most employers will will employ people on permanent four, and then the rest are employed on on on, on contract or, or or casual. So they have no provision for pay, for, for 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 that NSSF. So this act provides that anybody, anybody with an employee, with one employee, you know, that's why you, who has a house help, who has a chamber boy, you know, all those people you have hired, you become an employee, an employer in this eyes of this act, which means you must register yourself as an employer and your employee registers as a member and then deduct and submit contributions on their behalf. And of course, the, the objective to operate and manage a scheme that is value adding to its members. Why, that's the reason why they have, they have in, 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 in simple terms, closed the old fund that seem to be having a lot of challenges and opened a new fund, which is starting uh, called the new pension fund for NSSF. So the NSSF subject to oversight, of course, regulatory compliance in terms of governance, the Retirement Benefits Act and regulations. Uh, uh, I mean, to be able to speak for the devil, you know, uh, I, I, I will basically say that there has been a lot of improvement around NSSM in terms of management of NSSM, um, in terms of governance, you know. Previously, we used to have a very uh, a small amount of assets being, in, being, in, being invested or managed by private fund managers. But today, over 70% of the assets of NSSF are managed by, by pension schemes, by pension, by pension, uh, pension fund managers, the, the likes of Olmoche, the likes of uh, Sanla, the likes of uh, Gen Africa, the likes, so, likes of, uh, of ICA, ICA Investment Management Services, COP Trust, and all these kind of organizations. So they're the ones now who are managing NSSF. So which means there's some level of independence in terms of decision making, in terms of where is the, is the money invested? Because these organizations are regulated by the Retirement Benefits Authority. So that, that helps to improve the level of trust around NSSF. Of course, uh, 30 or so percent of the fund is still in property, which is managed directly 
by directly by by NSF itself. Of course, uh, also there is as I mentioned segregation between the old fund and the new fund. So at least we are starting on a new slate. We are saying the old fund has issues, has 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 deficits, has issues of, of the administration, and we are asking ourselves how do we make sure that happens. Uh, and then of course composition of the of the board has also been slightly changed to provide for tripartite arrangement in terms of the government, in terms of KOTU or, or unions, not only KOTU, so unions and also uh, FKE, uh, I mean, uh, uh, recommending people on the, on the board as, as members. And of course, we also have now independent trustees who are appointed by the, by, the, by the CS to come through to be able to help in governance of the, of the NSSF. Of course, our statements in terms of investment, in terms of financial statements, as supposed to be submitted by, in six months by RBA, Try and actuarial, actuarial reviews have to be done uh, on the fund. And now annual general meetings are compulsory, unlike in the old fund where it wasn't compulsory for them to have annual general meetings. So now they must have annual general meetings and, and address any members questions in those, in those very particular meetings. Uh, membership of the new fund is that all members above 18 uh, years and subject to provisions of the Employment Act or all employees above 18 years and subject to the provisions of the act must be members of NSSF. So whether you have contract, you have, you have casual, you have permanent, whatever category you go under the Unplanet Act, they will have to become members of the new NSSF. The current NSSF members for the PF uh, are, 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 are except the voluntary cont contributors. So in the individual contributors will remain in the old fund but the, any employed members shall be members of the new fund. And the establishment of two funds, as I mentioned, provident and pension fund. Uh, of course, that you also need to notice that, um, that um, just if you go back to the previous slide, is, uh, is the old fund was a provident fund. What does the provident fund mean? And what's the difference between provident and pension? Provident means that, you know, you, save in the, in the, and at the end when you retire, the whole amount is provided is at your disposal to take it away as cash lump sum, yeah? Uh, that you can decide to take the whole amount, of course, there's a, applicable taxes, whatever they are, apply at that particular time, and go with the money and decide to do, well, to, to, to do with the money. The pension fund is uh, where the, you save all the money and at retirement, you are only allowed to do, to take a third as cash. Of the cash you have you have raised. Let's say you have raised six million Kenya shillings as you are in your port, you can only take two million as, as cash and four million, which is two thirds, must be used to uh, buy an annuity in an insurance company. Now, the the new the new fund that has been established is a pension fund. Nobody will be allowed to take the full cash lump sum at retirement. The old fund was a provident fund. People have been taking the full cash, of course, because also the amounts were, 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 were very small. But in the new fund, which is a pension, the amounts are going to be sizable. And therefore, the government is saying we should have more pensioners in retirement than having people taking cash for various reasons, which I can speak. I may not have to speak here. Otherwise, we will take a whole day in this very particular presentation. Uh, if we move to the next, uh, next uh, slide, um, the basis of contribution. So the previous, the previous contribution, five percent of salary of, of pensionable savings or pensionable earnings, uh, earnings subject to two hundred Kenya shillings. That was what the old, the old, uh, the old act was providing. The new act states that contributions are expressed as a percentage of pensionable earnings with limits that are not necessarily fixed, but are dependent on moving, moving um, uh, uh, areas. And those moving areas are you know, uh, the upper earnings limit and the lower earnings limit. And the, lower, the upper earnings limit is the monthly wages, is the, is the, is the minimum wage, you know, is the statutory minimum wage, which is going to be the basis on which contribution is going to be applied for tier one. It is minimum wage. So, so it will be an amount that moves every year because every year uh, there is a minimum wage that is declared for the country. And that's the amount that will be used as, uh, as a basis of contributions, which is 6% of that on an annual basis. That will be tier one. 
Now, of course, we have also what we call tier two, which is going to be based on um, four times national average earnings. National average earnings is a statistic which is, uh, 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 of course, uh, determined by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics in the national in the in the economic survey every year. So that is a, a figure that we'll be picking up every year and use it to be able to determine what is our upper earnings limit, which is four times national average earnings. So pension of earnings is the lower of the members, members monthly wages and the upper of the upper and the upper of the uh, uh, earnings and the upper of the earnings limit. So lower of the members monthly wages, it's the lowest and the upper earnings limit is what we call pensionable earnings. So in between there is where the government is interested in in terms of your contributions. Anything above that, they're not interested as we'll be able to see in a while. Next. So the levels of contributions are tier one, which is contribution earnings up to a minimum wage level, as I've mentioned. And tier two is contributions on earnings between minimum wage and earnings ceiling or upper earnings limit. So tier one contributions will be based on minimum wage. Tier two contributions will be based on uh, the difference between the upper earnings limit minus the minimum wage that is declared at that particular time. In between there is what tier two contributions will be based on. Now tier one to be paid directly to NSSF, so uh, uh, simply speaking, tier one replaces your 200 Kenya shillings. So your 200 Kenya shillings will no longer be 200 Kenya shillings end of, from end of this month. Uh, it will move from 200 to what we're calling tier one, which is 6% of minimum wage. And we'll see what are the minimum wage in the first year of implementation. Tier two will be paid to NSSF directly until us and when an employer has received approval for contracting out. So the employer has to apply to, uh, to the retirement benefits authority to, the, to say, I would want my employees, my employees' contributions not to be paid to NSSF, but to be paid to a scheme A, for example, Octagon Umbrella Retirement Benefit Scheme. So once you get that, that contracting out certificate, then your contributions are no longer sent to NSSF, are sent to your scheme, which are kept separately. Uh, separately and, 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 and under rules that, are, that mirror the NSSF Act itself. So we have tier one, which has to go directly to NSSF and tier two um, may go to NSSF if you don't have a pension scheme or you contribute to none to one, uh, or you may send your scheme if you have a scheme or you're contributing to an existing umbrella retirement benefit scheme that is compliant, yeah. Uh, so key definitions, lower earnings limit, I think we have gone through this, is average statutory minimum wage, yeah. Uh, upper earnings limit is uh, four times national average earnings. And then pension of earnings is the lower of the members monthly wages and upper the upper earnings limit. So average statutory minimum wage for, uh, which is being used uh, yeah, under the act for implementation in year one is 12,000 Kenya shillings. Now, of course, as uh, HR managers, you know that the current minimum wage is slightly higher than that 12,000 Kenya shillings. Uh, but um, the, the, the NSF has decided to use the same, the same tabulation that was put in the regulation of 2013. That time, the minimum wage was 12,000 Kenya shillings. The same way for national average earnings in 2013 was that 6,000 Kenya shillings. And that is what is being used as uh, as uh, as uh, as four times the upper earnings limit. So as we move to the next slide, uh, we are looking at um, the how the facing of tier one contributions uh, is being done. You know, you know, it's going to be faced in for, for over the next five years. So the it is six percent of pensionable earnings up to the lower earnings limit. This will be determined progressively as follows. The first year, the lower earnings limit is 6,000 Kenya shillings. The second year will be 7,000 starting from next year, February. The third year will be, be 8,000. The fourth year will be 9,000. The fifth year will be the prevailing minimum wage at that particular time. Will be the prevailing minimum wage at that particular time. Now, 
Now, the first year is 6,000. And I'm, when, I, when I'm speaking to people, because you know, sometimes talking to HR uh, from a mathematical perspective, sometimes it can become a bit confusing. So I'm saying, forget about all the years. Let's just focus on the first year or the year one. Once you understand the year one, year two rolling it up. So year one, which is starting from this month of February, is 6,000 lower as the lower earnings limit. It is 6% of 6,000 Kenya shillings, which 360 uh, shillings are 6% of, of 6,000. And the employer has to pay 360. So you are replacing your 200 shillings with 360. You are increasing it by 160 and then 160 for employer. Those contributions must be remitted to NSSF. You know, must be remitted to NSSF. Now, one of the things you may have to notice is that they could be employees who are earning a salary less than 6,000 Kenya shillings. Yeah, so which means their contribution will not be 360, will be the salary itself if it's 5,000. So you take 5,000 multiplied by 6% to be able to get the level one or tier one contribution that has to go to NSSF. So up to 6,000 is what the maximum is we're contributing as tier one. So this year, it's tier one contribution is 360 if you, all your employees are earning above 6,000 Kenya shillings. Now, another question comes and says, my employees, I pay them uh, 300 shillings per day, they are cash to 500 shillings per day, whatever it is. So how do I do this? These contributions are monthly. They are, the salary is perceived to be a monthly. So you combine all the money that you have paid them in a monthly, take 6% of that if it is less than 6,000, if, and then and then pay the, the tier one contributions. If it's more than 6,000 shillings, then tier one contributions will be 360 for those employees. Yeah. We move to the next one. Next slide. The next slide is facing of tier two contributions. So we have seen how tier one contributions plays out. Tier two contributions is 6% of pensionable earnings above the lower earnings limit, yeah? Uh, and the upper earnings limit as the, as the, as the upper. So, so what you, you do, you take the upper earnings limit minus the lower earnings limit multiplied by 6% is what is your pensionable earnings limit, you know? The progression is over the next five years as well. So year one, Fred, yes. If you may repeat that formula again. Okay. Uh, it is 6% of the upper earnings limit, yeah, minus the lower earnings limit. So upper earnings limit is fixed. It's the amount, the amount is fixed as you can see here. First year, it's going to be 50% of national average earnings. So the upper earnings limit is fixed. The upper earnings limit is fixed. The lower earnings limit is fixed at 6,000 Kenya shillings if somebody is earning, is earning more than 6,000 Kenya shillings. That's why the first year you will have 18,000 shillings, which is 50% which is of national average earnings. And national average earnings has taken us that 6,000 Kenya shillings. So, so half of that is 1,000 Kenya shillings. So the earning limit, which is 18,000 Kenya shillings. Yeah, I wish I had a board. I would be writing on the board. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to explain this in very simple uh, arithmetic. So the upper earnings limit is national earnings. National average earnings uh, is that 6,000 Kenya shillings. First year is half of that national average earnings, which is 18,000 shillings. That is the upper limit that you can use for purpose of tier two contributions. Anybody earning above that, you will only get, you will only pay 6% of that upper earnings limit. However, the basis is not just the upper earnings limit, it's the upper earnings limit minus the lower earnings limit. Yeah, minus the lower earnings limit. And we saw that our lower earnings limit, we saw that our lower earnings limit is 6,000 Kenya shillings. It's fixed at 6,000 Kenya shillings. So if you take, Okay, someone has said I repeat. <laughs> Let's go slowly. 
Sorry. Yes. Uh, on, can you write on the whiteboard oh, from your end? Oh, oh. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Uh, I will have to use my finger. Is that right? <coughs> so the. Uh, oh, what do I what do I use? <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have, I can't, I can't. You can't, okay. Uh, I don't have, uh, I don't have, uh, uh, what is it called? Um, whatever it's called, a that mouse. can move the thing, so. Oh, a okay. mouse, yes, I don't have a mouse. I'm speaking from my iPad. Yeah, let's just go back to it. I'll, I'll try as much as possible to be as simplified as we can. As simplified right. as we can. Yeah. Can you somebody help me? I, I, excellent. Um, so, so the upper earnings limit. So just forget about your salaries at the, at the moment. Just forget about your salaries. Imagine that your salaries are upper earnings and lower earnings. Yeah. So upper earnings limit. Imagine that everybody, all your employees are earning upper earning, upper earning which is which is half of that six thousand Kenya shillings, which is eighteen thousand Kenya shillings. Yeah. For purpose of NSSF, the lower earnings limit is six thousand Kenya shillings. So take 18 minus six, it becomes 12,000. So 12,000 is the basis on which tier two contribution is based on. So it will be 6% of 12,000, which becomes 720, 720. So 720 is tier two contributions, is tier two contributions, which is 6% of upper earnings limit, Upper earnings limit uh, minus minus six percent of lower earnings limit. That's the other way of looking at it and saying you have your upper earnings limit, which is eighteen thousand Kenya shillings. That's the other way of looking at it. Take six percent of that. That becomes ten eighty. Then minus tier one contribution, which is three hundred and sixty. You get seven hundred and twenty. That's the other way of looking at it. Yeah, so you can decide to take up earnings 6% minus lower earnings 6% and make the difference. The other way, the other way, which is simpler, take up earnings, up earnings itself, which is 18,000 minus lower earnings, which is 6,000, that becomes 12,000, 6% becomes 720. So year one, very simple, year one, if you are all your employees earn above 18,000 Kenya shillings, if all your employees earn above 18,000 Kenya shillings, tier one is going to be 360. Tier two is going to be 720, full stop, done. You will have no, nothing, nothing you will, you know, it's, it's done. For you, you are good and home and home and dry. If you have employees earn 18,000, that's where you have to do a little bit more for computations. Because then tier, tier one, you'll have, you'll have 360, which is okay. Tier two, you will take 18,000 Kenya shillings minus the salary that the person earns. Yeah. You will get, you, you know, tier two, tier two, I mean, for tier two, sorry, not that way. Tier two will be the salary that the person earns. Let's say he earns 15,000 Kenya shillings. Yeah. Minus 6,000, which is our tier, which is our basis of tier one contribution. So we get 9,000 Kenya shillings. And therefore, take six percent. That becomes your tier two contributions. So, if you, if you, if anybody earns below eighteen thousand Kenya shillings, then you will have to take the salary they earn minus tier two basis, which is six thousand minus tier one basis, which is six thousand, and multiply by six percent. That gives you your tier two contributions. Yeah, I will. I will show you the examples down there and i guess it will, it will be it will be a bit more easier for you to to be able to to, to understand so let's go to the next slide Fred, i wanted to ask these calculations the eighteen thousand and all is it yes. basic pay is it net pay is it what now nssf describes it describes pension earnings as basic pay plus all allowances so it's gross it's gross yes yes it's okay. gross. It's all allowances. So if your staff earns below eighteen thousand, and uh, they are earning ten thousand as basic, and then one thousand as, as uh, eating allowance, and two thousand as travel allowance, five thousand as sleeping allowance, all those 
allowances, add them together. That is what you are calling your, your salary, then minus tier, tier one, a basis which is 6,000, that becomes your, your tier two contributions. But as I've said, if all your, your staff earning 18,000 Kenya shillings, there's, there's no brainer for you. It's simply you have uh, 18,000 minus, minus 6,000, which is 12,000, that is 720 tier two contributions and 6% 6 of 6,000, which is 360 tier one contributions. So that's, that's what is simpl simplified. Now, this is the table that NSSF has tried putting across. And I, I remember somebody calling me and saying, look, they haven't made me more confused. This, I think, makes, you, makes it more simple, I thought. First is that they have tried to explain that any, 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 salary, be, any salary below 6,000. So you see they have taken a salary of 3,000, a salary of 4,500, 4, a salary of 6,000 Kenya shillings. So that pensionable earnings is, this, is, the, is the actual, yeah? And then now tier one, tier one the, basis on, the basis of tier one is actual. Now, tier one contributions will be like now for, for scenario one, will be 6% of 3,000, which is 180 employee, 180 employee, yeah. Totally 360. These people don't have tier, 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 one, tier two contributions. Anybody earning below 6,000 has, has no tier two cont contributions. Now, once you hit 6,000 Kenya shillings, you are getting your, your max in terms of tier one, which is 360 and 360 for the employer. Once you are, your employee salary goes beyond 6,000, then now you start asking yourself, what is tier one? Tier one still means 360 because we're still using our 6,000 as our, our, as our, as our, as our upper, our, as our limit on tier, on, tier one, on tier one contributions. But you can see tier two contributions, then tier two contributions are a 10,000, which, uh, uh, which is earnings, which actual earnings, minus the lower earnings, which is 6,000, gives you a tier two, which is 4,000 Kenya shillings. So you take 4,000 Kenya shillings, multiply by 6%, you get 240. So these are people earning below 18, 18,000 Kenya shillings. The ones who are earning 10, the ones who are earning 14. They give us actual examples of what your tier two contribution will be. But once you hit at an 18,000 Kenya shillings, then you are actual, then you are, you are, you are, you are, Basis on which your tier two contributions is is is, is basically twelve thousand, which is eighteen thousand minus six, giving you seven hundred and twenty. Yeah, so that's why you find anybody earning above eighteen is is no is no we we, we nobody's interested in that. Is interested in the eighteen thousand Kenya shillings. You pay your seven hundred and twenty and go. So you have seven twenty in terms of tier two contributions and three sixty in terms of tier one contributions. Now, that's the reason why you find tier one plus tier two is 1,000, tier one, I mean, tier, tier uh, employee and employer tier one, tier, tier two contribution is 1,440. And then you have uh, 360, which is, which is uh, tier, uh, employee and employer gives you 720. 720 plus 1440, it gives you 2,160, 2, which is the number that has been flying around on social media. So that is the total contribution that you will make to NSF end of this month is 2,160. That comes from employee and employer com combined. Yeah, I like it. Somebody has done for me a computation on this on the chat. So let's go to the next, the next, uh, the next uh, slide, which gives, I think, uh, another, another, another much more better example. So we are taking an illustration, number one, which is a member with a salary of 20,000 Kenya shillings. A member with a salary of 20,000 Kenyan shillings over the first period, contributions are 10%. So contributions are 10%. So, so we're assuming this member is in a, a, an occupational pension scheme. Yeah. And it is required to contribute 10%. Is required to contribute 10%, or he has been contributing 10% of his salary in the pension scheme. Yeah, and now this month HR has to compute what is their contribution for NSSF, what is their contribution to the scheme, what is their contribution for NSSF, what is the contribution to the scheme. We are using year one first, then we can go to year three. We have just done jumped into all the years because the even years will basically 
uh, run through we basically follow the examples that we have done. So first we are looking at the first, the, you know, year one, year two, year three, year one, year three, year five. Then we have monthly salary is 20,000 Kenya shillings. Upper earnings limit is 18,000 in year one. Yeah. So NSSF pension of earnings is 18,000. Now it's not 20 because the maximum that you are supposed to use is on Kenya shillings. Tier one pensionable earnings is 6,000, which is the maximum. Tier two pensionable earnings is, will be 18,000 minus six, which is 12,000 Kenya shillings. So tier one contribution will become 360, tier two contribution will become 720 because the contribution rate is 2%. Is two, I mean, the contribution rate is 6% of the tier one pension of earnings which is 6,000 and tier two pension of earnings minus, uh, which is upper earnings minus lower earnings of 12,000, that gives you 720. So therefore, in terms of employee, it will be 1,080. Yeah, it will be 1,080. So, so if, we, if we do that, uh, if we do that, then it means that what goes into the scheme, what we are calling tier three, what goes into the scheme will be the 2,000 because, because he contributes 10%, which 10% of 2,000, 10% of 20,000 is 2,000. So 2,000 minus 1080, it gives you with 1,280, yeah? 1,280. I think that's the correct mathematics, I'm hoping so. Yeah, yes, 1,280. So that goes into the, into, the, into the scheme. Yeah, no, 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 what we have done, we have, we, have, we have netted off the tier two contributions. One of the things that we are trying to help employers understand, or employ, yeah, HR understand, is tier one contributions, in most cases, you have added to the contribution to the pension scheme. So if they, the, the, scheme is, the scheme is contributing 2,000 Kenya shillings, but the salary is 200, the salary is 20,000 Kenya shillings, you have always done 2,000 into the scheme and 200 into NSSF. So the contribution has been 2,200 both to NSSF and the pension scheme. So which means tier one is still going to additional costs is to be integrated. Tier two, is what we are advising employers to integrate. So you take 2,000 minus 720. So 720 goes to tier two, to tier two contribution and 1,280 goes to what we are calling or private uh, pension scheme. Yeah. Uh, now you will see that this is supposed to be remitted to NSSF that, that um, uh, 360 plus 720 need to be remitted to NSSF or a scheme of choice, which is the NSS, which is 720, a scheme of choice when you get a contracting out uh, into the of, of the of the of the employer. Year three, of course, year three, what happens is that if you look at year three, the salary remains the same, which is 20,000 Kenya shillings. The upper earnings limit in year three is, is twice. Upper, twice the national average earnings. National average earnings is that 6,000 Kenya shillings and twice becomes 72,000 Kenya shillings. So our upper earnings limit in year three will be 72,000 Kenya shillings. So therefore, the, the national pensionable earnings limit for year three will be the salary because the salary now is lower than the upper earnings limit. So therefore we'll use 20,000 shillings as the upper earnings limit, so which means the tier one contribution will be 8,000 because in year three, uh, the limit has gone up to 8,000 Kenya shillings. Tier two contributions will be 12, will be based on 12,000 because that is 20 minus eight, 20,000 minus eight, it will be 12,000. So we'll have 480 Kenya, sh 80 Kenya shillings tier two, tier one contribution and 720 uh, uh, in tier two contributions, yeah? So giving you a total of 1,200 in year three. If this person is still earning 20,000 Kenya shillings and the limit, the up earning limit is 72,000, the lower earnings limit has gone up to 8,000 Kenya shillings. The balance of uh, out of 720 of 1280 goes into the scheme or NSSF uh, if, uh, if you don't have a pension scheme and you haven't contracted out. Year five, 
year five, you can see year five that the person still earns 20,000 Kenya shillings. The upper earnings limit has gone up by 36,000 by four, which is 140. So which means the national pension of earnings is the exact salary, which is 20, yeah? So tier one has gone up to 15,000 Kenya shillings from our, from our schedule as we saw earlier. Tier two contributions will be 20,000 minus, minus the tier one uh, up, uh, pension of earnings, which is 15, gives you 5,000. Therefore, your contribution, tier one will be 900, tier two will be, tier two will be, uh, 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 6% or 5 of, of uh, will be 6% or 5,000, which is about 300 Kenya shillings. Yeah. So, so therefore, your total contribution becomes 900 plus, plus that, it becomes 1,200. And tier and the, the rest of the other money, which is, um, which will be 300 minus, I mean, 3,000 minus 300 coming to coming to 1,700 goes to the main scheme. So, this is assuming the person's salary remains the same of 20,000 shillings over the period of uh, phased out uh, implementation. Let's go to the, the uh, next uh, illustration. The next illustration, we are using 100,000 Kenya shillings. You have an employee today who has 100,000 Kenya shillings as salary, same contribution in your pension scheme of 10 of 10%. Uh, so the monthly salary is 100,000 in year one. The upper earnings limit is 18,000 Kenya shillings. The national pensionable up earnings limit is 18,000 Kenya shillings. The tier one pensionable earnings is 6,000 Kenya shillings. The tier one, tier two pensionable earnings is 18 minus six, that becomes 12,000 shillings. And therefore tier one and tier two remain 360 and 720, which is 1,080. So we integrate the tier two contributions. We remove them from the 10,000, which is 10% multiplied by 100,000. 100, so 10,000 minus 720, so 9,280 goes to the scheme, 720, 360 goes to NSSF, unless you have got a contracting out certificate where 720 will go into, uh, into, the, uh, into the scheme. Uh, if you go to year three and the person earns, still earns 100,000 Kenya shillings, the upper earnings limit now becomes 72,000 shillings. The national, uh, NSSF pension uh, pensionable earnings uh, 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 will become 72,000 shillings because it is still lower than the salary. So we're not interested in anything above 72,000 Kenya shillings. But tier one pensionable earnings has gone to 8,000, which means the difference between 72 and 68 becomes 64. So 64 becomes our tier two pensionable earnings. Therefore, 6% of 64 and 6% of 8,000. So we have 480 as tier one contribution, uh, 3,840 as tier two contribution, which is 6% of 64,000 Kenya shillings. Now, which means we'll take our 10,000 shillings minus 3,840. So therefore the balance of contribution is 6,160 will go to uh, the scheme. And of course, plus that 840, if you have a contracting out certificate. We go to year five, year five in such a way that uh, the person is still earning 100,000, but our upper earnings limit has now moved to 144,000 Kenya shillings, yeah? This means that our NSSF pensionable earnings now is no longer the upper earnings limit, it is the salary itself. So, the tier one contribution has gone up to 15,000, which is the minimum wage. The tier two contribution will become 100,000 minus 15, which is 15, which is 85,000 Kenya shillings. So 6% of 85 is 5,100, and 6% of 15,000 is, is 900 Kenya shillings. So therefore, the total NSF contribution is 6,000, and the one that goes to the scheme, which is 10,000, 10, 10,000 10, minus 5,100, it becomes 4,980. Of course, if you have a contracting out certificate, then 5,110 plus 4,900 uh, 4, okay, so 5,100 plus 4,900 will go into the scheme if you have a contracting out certificate. So as I mentioned, if this becomes too complicated, year one is critical because year two will flow into it. Year one, if you have a salary above 18,000 Kenya shillings, the contribution is based on 18,000 Kenya shillings as, as, um, 
as uh, tier two contributions. Of course, less uh, 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 level one, I mean the lower earnings limit. And then tier one is basically 360 Kenya, 360 Kenya shillings. Let's go to the next slide. The next slide, we are using 500,000 shillings, which basically uh, basically is the same as the, the, uh, the previous slide, which I don't think I want to go through the whole, the whole process. Looking at year one gives you the same amount as we have put earlier. So benefits payable out of NSSF. These are, these are benefits paid uh, from the contributions that are tier one and tier two contributions. Whether tier two comes into the scheme or goes to NSSF, the benefits payable are no more retirement, early retirement, permanent immigration, ill health and death. You realize that there's no withdrawal here. There is no, you cannot be able to access the benefit until you get to age 50, you know? And like today, you know, you know our normal pension schemes where an employee can be able to access 50% of the total benefit when you get to the, when you withdraw at any time at any age. These benefits can only be accessed at the earliest 50 years. And at 50, you are accessed at an early, as an early retirement benefit, at, at 60 as normal retirement, and of course, a permanent immigration, ill health, and death. I think we have explained further, if we can move. Uh, so upon actualization of any of the approved exit crowns, tier one contributions plus income are combined with the tier two contributions plus income, and a member will receive up to one third at, at, at early retirement and two thirds as a monthly pension purchased from an annuity or an income drawdown. The annuity drawdown uh, the annuity drawdown must be either payable by payable for, for life with a minimum of 10 year guarantee. So, you know, if you understand annuities, annuities can have five year, 10 year, 15 year, 20 year guarantees. But now the government says you must only have a 10 year guarantee, which uh, uh, you buy an annuity using your, yeah, what you call protected benefits. Next, taxation, uh, which is also critical this month to deduct these contributions. Um, when you are deducting the contributions, of course, uh, previously if you have deducted contributions on NSSF, you will, if you have a salary of ten thousand Kenya shillings, you will remove. Let me let me use let me use uh, let me use uh, fifty thousand Kenya shillings. You will remove two hundred Kenya shillings. It's tax relieved. It's tax it's tax allowable. You know, so your taxable pay becomes 48,200 to 800 Kenya shillings. Yeah, that's your taxable pay. That's 49,800 uh, uh, Kenya shillings. That will be your taxable pay. Now, your 200 now has moved from 200 to 1,080. So, your you taxable pay, you, you will have to get 50,000 minus 1080 to be able to get your taxable pay. Now, which will be about forty-eight thousand, I think. I think uh, uh, two hundred and eighty. Yeah, I think something like that. Yeah, so that will be your taxable pay. So you will need to remove it in the current in the in the in the cross pay in the in the taxable pay before you are able to tax it out. Now, of course, if you are contributing to a pension scheme today, you have given two hundred shillings plus any contribution that are going to the pension scheme. If some, this person is going to be 10%, then he's contributing 5,000 Kenya shillings. So you have been removing 5,200 Kenya shillings into, uh, out of your 50,000 to get your taxable pay. Now today, you are going to now take 5,000 Kenya shillings plus 1080 to get 6,080 to remove from 50,000 to get your taxable pay. So tax deductibility becomes very critical uh, so that members don't lose on tax on tax deductible uh, uh, that's what they're supposed to get. Now tax on income is unclear in the act. They have they are silent on it. So that's why we're saying income may be tax free. That that needs to be clarified with KRA uh, once we get that clarification we'll be able to communicate. However, all the benefits that will accrue out of these contributions will be tax-free at retirement. So you'll get your lump sum, which is a third as, as tax-free, and two thirds as a monthly pension, which will come to you as tax-free. So that's how the tax will be applied on this very particular uh, benefits. Okay. 
So penalties for breach, contributions lay at 5% per month. If you don't pay your contributions at the end of this month, you will be charged 5% per month uh, uh, while they still are, are outstanding. The final misrepresentation on benefits claim, not exceeding 300,000 or imprisonment for a term, not exceeding three months or both. And evasion liable to a payment of contributions with the interest or J terms, you know. And fine not exceeding 100,000 shillings for any offense for which no penalty is expressly provided for. So please just make sure that you don't become the guest of the state. Next slide. Uh, contracting out. So those ones who, who wish to contract out and which we recommend that all of you must wish to contract out of the scheme, out of NSSF, tier two contributions, because they're going to be a large amount as we saw on our, on our spreadsheet. It's going to be a large amount of money. Now, uh, we're not saying that a large amount should go to NSSF, but they haven't proved sufficiently enough that they can be able to, to manage a large amount of money. So which means that you can't then be able to contract out of NSSF. One thing that you need to understand, at the end of this month, end of this month, none, no scheme, no employer would have contracted out because of the timelines that have been provided by RBA. So end of this month, you'll have to contribute 1080 and 1080 if you have salaries above 18,000 Kenyan shillings or applicable if, if you have below to NSSF. Now, then if you have a scheme, if you have a scheme, then what it needs to happen is that scheme needs to be reviewed. The trust deed needs to be amended or do an amendment, a deed of amendment and send to RBA plus what we are calling the reference test, 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 test uh, scheme, test certificate, which is provided by the administrator for the scheme to be approved, for the scheme to be approved. Uh, once it has been approved, they will use from C1, from C1 to apply as an employer. So the employer is the one who applies for, for contracting out. So you use from C1 to, to apply because on from C1 you have to state who is supposed to contract out, which, which categories of employees you want to contract out, and, and to which scheme you are contracting out. You know? So once you provide that, then RBA will be able to give you a contracting out certificate. Once you have gotten that, the tier two contributions can be sent to the your, your occupational scheme. Now, for those ones who are who are, are contributing to umbrella pension schemes, the umbrella pension scheme providers, the administrators, and like ourselves, we have applied to, we have sent our deeds to, to RBA for purpose of compliance. Now, once they come back and confirm that, that the, the trust is compliant, we will we will give you this from C1. As employers who are participating in the in the in the in the umbrella scheme to sign, and then of course get the uh, uh, board uh, board resolutions uh, that are relevant, which will also, also be attached. Then we will take the, take those documents, send to RBA, and RBA will issue with a contracting out certificate. Then now the contributions can come into the umbrella fund. Those ones who have never had a pension scheme, never contributed to a pension scheme, now you have an opportunity to be able to start either establish your own scheme, which we're not recommending at the moment because contributions are very low to be able to cover costs for running an occupational scheme. But you have an opportunity to enter an umbrella pension scheme as a participating employer. Once you have done that, then this, you will be given from C1, uh, which you will complete and taken through in terms of uh, getting a contracting out certificate and your employees can then start contributing to the umbrella scheme. Please, this is the best way to do it uh, so that you are able to protect your members' money at the end. Uh, of course, that's what I have mentioned, application for opting out, automatic default to NSSF, and process for opting out is uh, 60 days from the date you apply for opting out to NS2 RBA. Next. Uh, so, so, mean, so, I mean, reference scheme test is, uh, you need to have the application through RBA in terms of Form C1, uh, where the scheme is registered with RBA with a valid certificate, is, a, is registered with KRA with a valid tax exemption certificate, complies with RBA investment guidelines, all that. So that, that if you have an administrator who runs your scheme, we'll be able to take you through that in terms of that. If you don't have, you are, you are joining an umbrella scheme, the administrator of the umbrella scheme will be able to take you through that in terms of making sure that um, 
you have a reference scheme test uh, certificate to send to RBA. Okay. Areas of clarification is definition of pensionable earnings. Yeah, pensionable earnings. Uh, they need to be a little bit more clear in terms of uh, those uh, uh, earnings that needs to be applied, especially so the, the, there is a, there's a talk about next year going straight on to full, which is means a four times national average earnings and uh, minimum wage, which, which is, a, which is a prevailing then. So that needs to be clarified. Grace period for implementation. So there has been a, a cry that the implementation is too short. So people have been asking for grace period. Uh, and then harmonization of tax benefits, that needs to be harmonized. As I've mentioned, the Income Tax Act uh, provides for tax exemption on income, but, that's in, but, this, that, but that's not mentioned in this, this act. A calendar period for reporting, uh, I think we're talking about December, but uh, some schemes are also uh, reporting June. So we will have to harmonize that with the, uh, the act and treatment of individuals with multiple employers. You know, there are people who work with different employers uh, so that needs to be harmonized in terms of contributions to the employer, to the NSSF that are related to that. So what next? The current contribution of 200 effectively increases to tier one, which is um, to tier one, which is at 360. And then there'll be tier two contributions. Existing scheme for opting out for uh, out uh, uh, form C, C1, 60 days is provided for or set up a scheme. Uh, and then appoint consultant or seek professional advice. We are here to help you to make, make sure that you are able to uh, go through with those, with do this without a lot of and asking about protected rights benefits. Basically, protected rights contributions are the ones we're talking about, tier one and tier two, and protected rights benefits accrue from from tier one and tier two as uh, as uh, as uh, as benefits from those contributions which are protected. Uh, next, I think that should be my last slide. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. Wow, I've taken a whole one hour. <laughs> <laughs> now, Fred. Yes. Uh, you know, I like simplifying my life. Eh? I, yes, I, yes. I, I, I do not even speak very huge English, and uh, my little <laughs> friends don't like me. Akinel, Kevin, they wonder how I went to school. So now, uh, in summary. I want to make our lives very easy. Mm -hmm. Are we saying, yes. is it safe to say that in this month of February, say for example, mm. uh, are we, impl no, I'm, I'm going to ask two questions. Are we implementing this new law? Question number one. Question number two, is it mm. safe to say as long as everyone in your company earns uh, 18,000 shillings and above, we are going to start to deduct 1080. We're talking about now. You are 2020. You are 2024 to deal now your time. February. Yes. We are running payroll now. Mm. We are running payroll now. Oh, apologies mm. to our Ugandan friends. Um, are we, <laughs> Fred, you're in trouble. <laughs> I, 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 can, I, I, have, I have realized that. <laughs> let's, let's deal with Kenya first. <laughs> so are we saying mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. this month of February, so long yes. as all your employees are 18,000 and above, we are submitting 1080 from employer and 1080 from employee to NSSF. In summary. I, yes, in summary, first, this is the month of implementation. The payroll you are running this month, you must deduct the correct contributions to NSSF. The correct contributions are 1080 employee, 1080 employer. As so, long as you have employees earning above 18,000 pension shillings. So uh, let me save all HRs the trouble. HRs in the house, uh, don't worry yourself about the upper earning, lower limit, don't please yes. go to your payroll if you're running payroll this month and deduct mm. 1080 for, from employee and 1080 mm. from employer and file that to nssf finish period period yes? period now and once you have decided to subcontract i'm mm. trying to now speak uh, uh, the uh, normal english no, no. <laughs> you know i know <laughs> So um, the 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 once the the 
we are done with February and March because I have seen you have said the approvals for opting out is 60 days. Yes. Yes. So in the meantime, we write to RBA or we fill form C1. Are we filling form C1 or are we approaching because for, for employers who don't have a pension scheme? For for employers who don't have a pension scheme, mm -hmm. uh, and you want to contract out, the first step is come to Octagon. Yeah. We will first of all, you will you will get what you call a participating agreement. Once we give you a participating agreement in the umbrella fund, then we give you from C1, which now you will complete. After you have completed, you will you give us a board resolution to say that you want your employees to contract out of NSSF, NSSF. You get that we get that, put together from C1, put together with our, our approval for our scheme, for our scheme, sent to NSSF to so RBA, RBA will give you a contracting our certificate. I've seen somebody asking, my email is fred.waswa. W A S W A, and I'm Kenyan. I'm not a twin. Fred dot Waswa at octagonafrica dot com, and my number is zero seven two four four seven one eight two one. Sorry, Mister Waswa, I was typing it down. Dot dot com. Yeah, yeah. Fred dot Waswa at octagonafrica dot com fred dot waswa at octagon africa dot com excellent 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 it's on the chat yes and my number is 0724-471-821 okay now in the spirit of simplify you know we are going to to simplify this one simplify it completely it right. yes. <laughs> this is get it right and we must get yes. it right all right yes. so uh, we have dealt with, for those who are earning 18,000 and above this month, 1080 from employer, 1080 from employee, we are submitting 2160 to NSSF. Done. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, also, if you do not have uh, an umbrella fund, you can seek out and get quotations from the uh, firm fund managers, and then from there, they'll guide you in the process of going to RBA. If you don't have an umbrella fund, it is very straight. Give me a call, send me an email, <laughs> I will sort you out. It's very but, easy. Yes. Don't get complicated. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, uh, yes, Zach, I have said that. 1080s for those who are earning above 18,000. I am coming now to the people who are earning less than that. Right. So um, what we are saying is for those earning 18,000 and above, 1080 goes to from employer 1080 to from employee it goes to nssf s 2160 18000 please note number Correct. 2 if you do you uh, have employees who earn less than 18000 shillings mm. this is where your mathematics have to come into play correct you have to start deducting the 6000 and yes. all those things that waso has said no, 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 no. What you only need to do, if you have a salary below 18,000, tier one contribution is, is set at six at 360. So that you're not, not, you're not touching. So what is giving you trouble is tier two contributions. Yeah. So take the salary minus 6,000 multiplied by 6%. That will be a tier two contribution. Oh, hey, now I am getting you. So for Correct. those who are earning 15,000, I mean, 18, less than 18,000, number one, there's the 360 that is mandatory. That, that one is on discussion. Correct. Yeah? Now, mm. for tier two, you take mm -hmm. their salary. Mm -hmm. You minus from 18,000. No, 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 no. You minus 6,000. 6, oh, 6,000, sorry. And so you, you minus six they are 17,000. Say, for example, they earn 17. Correct. Yes. If they are earning 17,000, you minus 6,000, and then you multiply by 6%. Yes, you yes. multiply by 6%. So 17 minus 6 is 11. So you take uh -huh. 11 and multiply by 6%. Which yes. is 6. Yeah? Which yes. is 60. So, so that is now tier 2 contributions. So you will take 360 plus this other one that you have gotten in your minusing. And then uh -huh. that is what you submit. To NSSF, correct. To NSSF. Correct. correct. Okay. So I, we are I, still... I, 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 I can see you are, you are good understanding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Aya. Aya. 
Now, for those who are earning 6,000 or less. Yes. That, that one, Kwanza, is trouble if you're paying people less than 6,000, you're in trouble. But yes, for those who are earning 6,000 and less, what do we do? For those who are earning 6,000 and less, there is no tier two, it's only tier one. Take 6% multiplied by the salary they're earning, send to NSSF. Bus. So 6,000 and below, there's no uh, tier two. It is only. There's no tier two. Yes, it's 360. Yes. Submit to NSSF. I hope you guys are getting it right. Eh? Absolutely. Um, Henry has done a, con a, 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 a calculation a there. Okay. I, I am assuming that is for people earning less than uh, 18,000. Okay. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh, what did I want to ask? There's something. Okay, there's somebody on the chat who got me confused. Oh, yes, <laughs> casuals. Now, uh -huh. explain for casuals in very simple terms. So, you have casuals which you pay. Per week. Yeah, per week. So yes, you are we pay them, them on Saturday. You are paying them Saturdays, and maybe you are paying them on Saturdays, you are paying them maybe 10,000 every Saturday. Or they, maybe they, earn six, they earn hmm? 650 per day. It is the minimum or, wage, 653 per or day. 650 per day. Yes. So what you do, you, 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 are, you have paid them first week, you have paid them second week, you have paid them third week. When you are paying them the last week, you must calculate and say how much have I paid them the whole month? Is it is it below six thousand? Is it above six thousand? So if it's it below six thousand, like be above. Yeah. So if it's above six thousand, okay. then you are paying three sixty plus tier two contributions. Ah, uh, so even for yeah. them, we must combine their earnings per month and Absolutely. then deduct. So weekly, deduct, we have yeah. to see what percentage we're deducting from their salaries to combine it in the. Okay, I'm just thinking. On how to implement that uh, because uh... <laughs> yeah yeah the 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 idea is the idea is that every person who earns an income you know however however he earns that income they should they should, they should contribute okay so yeah that's fine um what about casuals who come on a call only they don't like get to, they come for three days mm -hmm. this week. They are not working next week. They come for another three days after that. You see, anybody who works for you, whether he's coming, working for you for a day, working for you for three days, unless it's a consultancy, which is a different different agreement. But if it's an employment agreement, if it's, a, if it's an engagement that is going to work for me and I pay a salary, whether it's working for you for just two days a month, and that two days a month is gets, is gets, it gets 10,000 shillings, those 10,000 must be deducted as NSS, as an self contribution. So if, if they come, for example, for three days only, and that's yes. it, for this that's month, right. that's it, what do we yeah. do with them? We don't deduct. You, you, you do. Oh, the three, three days. days. I don't, I, are you not paying them those three days? You'll pay them for the three days, yes. Of course. So when you pay, you must deduct. Unless the yeah. amount, okay. yeah, <laughs> whatever. Even if it's 2,000 shillings, you have to pay tier one contribution. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I, I hope you've understood that one, uh, CHRP Nyakoi. Um, okay, uh, there was another- Somebody saying uh, freelancers. Yeah, there's the freelancers, there's also consultants, and, and uh, now yeah. talk to us about opting out. Uh, opting out, opting out is it's a very simple process. Opting out is, as I mentioned, for those that have pension schemes, yeah, those that have pension schemes, their trust deeds must be amended to provide in rules of NSSF. Because opting out what you are saying, I'm not paying money to NSSF, I'm paying this scheme. But this scheme must have an environment that looks like NSSF. You get it? So, mm -hmm. so, so if you have a pension scheme, the first thing that must be done is an amendment to the trust deed. Once the amendment has been done to the trust deed, then you, you fill from C1, you fill from you fill you get uh, you get uh, you get the, the the resolutions in terms of board resolutions as a company, yeah. I uh, put them together plus reference test 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 uh, test scheme certificate and send them to RBA. Now this if you have a scheme today running, you must be having an administrator, unless you are doing it in house. So that administrator should be able to help you in that process. Yeah. If they don't help you, please just give me a call or drop you an email. I will support you. Yeah. Uh, and, and I also want to say, I also want to say, uh, uh, Grace, is that, you know, in 2020, 40, in 2014, I ran people's payrolls. 
So if, if anybody has a challenge of doing payroll, please just give me a call. I'll do for you a spreadsheet on how the payroll will run and you go and run your payroll and your life, life becomes easier. So don't, get, don't, don't have your life complicated. We will be able to help you out. Yeah. Okay, if yes. you don't have a scheme at all, if you don't have a scheme at all, first pay the contributions at the end of this month. Once you have paid, yeah, look for a, 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 a company that runs an umbrella fund. Now, the, if you go to the website of RBA, they are umbrella funds registered on RBA's website. Go there and look for those umbrella funds. But I'm simply saying, you don't have even to go there. Just give me a call and we'll be able to put you straight into an umbrella fund uh, and you will have uh, your benefits uh, secured. Okay. And then uh, uh, somebody was asking about freelancers and freelancers, do they pay NSSF? I, th I thought that one mm. you choose. You, you go yeah. to private pension schemes. Uh, yeah, with octagon not, runs. I mean, I self-employed people, so they don't. Yeah. Yeah, you're self-employed, so you you can choose to save with the octagon on their private pension, which I'm on a member of, by the on way. On the IPP, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Um, the, there was another interesting question that I had seen. There's so many questions today. Um, <laughs> Peter is saying, assume one worked only for one day, and uh, for 500 bob in a month. How much is it payable to NSSF? <laughs> For 500 bob in a month, I don't want to work to one day. Oh my God. Because that means you have to pay 6% of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the part yeah, where I they'll be signing like uh, not a pay, but as a, yeah. uh, uh, I care, please, government, don't listen to this. But this is where you'll be paying them like petty cash, not like a pay uh, to avoid. Sorry. <laughs> um, so now, what happens to the existing money? What happens to the existing money? In where? In NSSF? In in uh, in NSF and also private funds. No, the, those ones are not touched. The, the NSSF, of course, as I mentioned, that is going to be that has been ring fenced and it's good. It's, it's an old fund closed now. Um, so when you when one retires, we'll get we'll get money from the pension side and we we'll get money from the provident side. Those ones who are members of the provident, so you know our as we are contributing two hundred shillings. Anybody who's running a, a running an occupational scheme today, there's no difference. You just run an occupational scheme. The only thing is that now you are going to receive contributions that are NSSF based. So the the statements will change a bit. In the statement, you'll have protected rights benefits. And you have what you call unprotected right benefits. So the statement will have two different categories of, uh, of, of benefits to, to make sure that when somebody's leaving, can get the 50% of the unprotected and can't get anything of the protected rights benefits. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what is this about? What is a segregated fund? Okay. Uh, now, that segregated and guaranteed is, uh, is about investment. It's about investment. Is that you, can, you have a, an occupational scheme and you decide that you want to uh, hire a fund manager and the fund manager will invest the assets in, in using the investment policy statement in the market. Yeah? So you, you as trustee sit down with the fund manager and say, so we will invest 20% in equities, uh, we'll invest 70% uh, uh, in bonds, we'll invest 60, I mean, whatever percent in, in fixed deposits. Then the fund manager goes out and does, does that, that investment and gives you a return on based on those, those assets. That's what we call seg segregated. That's why is it segregated? Because your assets are invested as your assets. They are not combined, they're not commingled, they're not combined with other assets. Guaranteed is where it's provided by insurance companies. So yeah, it's provided by insurance companies. So where you go to the insurance company and say, I have 100 million Kenyan shillings as my pension fund, please invest them they will combine with other assets and invest them as a pool, you know, as an invest, investment as a pool. That's what you call it guaranteed. Then they give you a certain minimum guarantee. Yeah, so the difference between guaranteed and segregated is basically one invest directly in the assets, in the, in the asset, in the economy, and whatever it makes, whatever return they get, they bring to you. One also invest in the economy, but as a, as a, as a commingled with other assets, other pension scheme assets, and then they, when they get a return, they give you minimum return on that very particular basis. There's All a right. question. I, know here. If I went into describing what they return. Yes. 
There's a question here. What happens if one moves from one employer to the other and they are of different umbrella schemes? That is a question by Davis Omari. No, I mean, uh, portability, portability can be to anywhere, anywhere. You can transfer your benefit from one umbrella scheme to another without any, any, any bigger challenge. You can transfer your benefit from, from uh, an umbrella to individual. You can transfer your pension benefit from an umbrella to occupational. So you can move from a company which is, has its own pension scheme. So what happens is that then you have been coming from an umbrella. You simply transfer from, from the umbrella to the, to the uh, your occupational pension scheme. And transfer normally is very easy. It's a letter is written to the trustees informing them that you have moved, you had your benefits moved from this scheme to another scheme and trustees are supposed to do that in 30 days. Okay. Uh, the other question probably comes from me. What happens if uh, you, you had mentioned about a third of the mm. total contribution being able, one is able to withdraw? Is this money coming from the umbrella or it comes directly from NSSF? Now, you see, if, if, you, if you have done, if you have opted out, you have done opting out. So which means that tier two contributions are coming into the umbrella scheme, yeah? Mm -hmm. If tier two contributions are coming into the umbrella scheme, uh, at the end when you retire, you will take the, 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 the you will take the, you know, you go to NSSF, NSSF will transfer what is in, what is in NSSF tier one, transfer mm -hmm. into your umbrella as tier two, yeah? And then combine those two and get a third of that. Okay. Then the two thirds, the umbrella trustees will buy for you an annuity from an insurance company. Of your choice? Of your choice. You decide where to, where, where, where best can send the money. <laughs> okay, now, um, the other question I wanted to ask is, uh, me as an employee, yes. so for example, the employer wants to take everything to a necessary, but me as an employee, I want part to go to, I want I want to, to NSSF, Entire two, I would like it to be taken to a private scheme. Is it doable? Is it possible? As an individual, it's not possible uh, because the only person who can contract out is the is the, as an employer. Yeah. So once the employer has decided that this category of employees, I would I would take my money to a private pension scheme. That is it. So if you're in that category, then you must go to that that the direction. Okay, can employers contract out of existing private schemes to take advantage of the NSSF scheme, which could be potentially cheaper for some employees? I don't understand what is cheaper. Oh, okay, say, I, guess, I, guess, I guess what you are saying is uh, you run a scheme today of 10% and 10%. So you want to close that and, uh, and only pay to NSSF. Uh, I, I, I guess the, the challenge will be how to manage employee perception in terms of reduction of their benefits. That becomes a really bigger challenge. Um, uh, the, I know some employers are going to attempt doing that, uh, but then you have employee relations issues at that particular time. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you, you're likely to be challenged and especially if you can't prove that you don't have money. Yes, uh, yes. Because, because what the law requires for you is to give whichever is higher, put in That's quote. Right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, wow, it is almost 10 o'clock, my people. And, uh, <laughs> and but I like the question by Frederick. Uh, are there better rates in terms of interest with the new rates? With the new? The new with pension the new fund? Rate. Yes. Are, are the uh, interest better? The interest, is, okay. NSSF itself, of course, of course, makes a return on the money, but the problem with NSSF has been the cost, the cost of administration, which has been quite, quite high. Um, that has eaten into, into, into interest, into income that goes to the members. So you find they'll make a 7% return, but only distribute 2% or 3% because the rest has gone into admin. Uh, we are hoping that the new fund will be managed better uh, to be able to give better returns. But that's why there is an option of you opting out because the private sector pension schemes have a maximum of, of costs of 2% of the fund. So we can, never, we can never incur more than 2% of the fund. All the costs, both admin, fund management, custody, trustee, and, and, um, and everything else, and member education or whatever you can talk about, can't go beyond 2%. So you find that in the, in the private sector, also, the fund managers are, are basically more, more active there. 
So you get a return of about 10%, 12%. So if you, if you are, if you are, if you are the, the fund is charging you 1% because as, as much as there's a maximum of 2%, most of the schemes, a scheme which is about 2 billion or 3 billion like our fund, you will see that the fees is about 1%. So if you are you are getting a, an income of about 10%, then it means you're just doing 9%. So there is much, much better return in private sector pension schemes. And also, and also um, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the probability that the member will get benefits is higher than sending NSSF, where they will search for that benefit forever or along the world. So you know, it's, 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 it's much easier to do that than sending to NSSF uh, in that very particular respect. Okay, and then uh, please remember, do not be stuck. We have Fred here, he has offered to help us uh, run our payroll this month, so we are safe. And uh, yeah, um, Davis, uh, what happens with employee with net income that is negative due to loan deduction? First of all, uh, the law says that the employee needs to go with a third home. So even those Correct. loan deductions, you need to go and relook at them because they need to get at least a third you increase the term and reduce the amount of money they are paying and also talk to your circle so that and and give them financial literacy sessions so that they can stop overloaning and overburdening uh employees i know some of them and especially in industrial area where i belong uh mm -hmm. we face a lot of uh, but that is my money you know uh <laughs> you know uh, and they only pay rent during uh, advances because that is the only time their money makes sense but uh, <laughs> yes, uh, yes, uh, we will do share the recording. Um, yes, you can recap on this one. We will share the, the recording and we'll upload it on our YouTube channel. Uh, get it right to the Tara Solutions. I think Jacinta had shared. Uh, yes, Jacinta, we talked about a personal pension scheme parallel with the NSSF one. Yes, you can, right, uh, Fred? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, you can do your own uh, additional voluntary contributions. Yes, uh, somebody is saying uh, employers with pension schemes and contribute 20% and employee 10%. What happens now before contracting out? Does the employer and employee contribute um, more over the above, over and above the 30% already contributed or can they decide to take it from their current contributions? Now, um... Before you change, if you before you do an amendment to the trust deed, you will not be allowed to do what what you are what you are saying is integration. You will not be allowed to remove from twenty and ten percent. So until you do an amendment to the trust deed and approved by RBA, you will have to have an additional cost. I mean today, twenty percent and ten. I guess this is to be for a start of because this I want to pay maximum of this. 10% and 20%, I guess today you are adding 200. You don't remove 200 from there. Yeah. So if that, that's the same case, then you should add, instead of adding, adding 200, you're adding 1080. So you have an, an additional cost of about 1080 uh, for one or two months before you can uh, start integrating into your 10 and 20% contributions. All right. Um... Ati, please clarify position for consultants. Consultants are not, no, no. They, are, they are freelancers. Unless you're yeah. running your own company where you earn your own salary. But if you're a, you're a freelancer, then you, you should go and get the private pension scheme. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Grace, I asked a question. Yes. We have been paying 2160 since it started. How will this be treated? You continue with the 2160, right, Fred? Correct, correct, correct. The only yes. thing now you can is to seek for opting out because please don't pay those, because now it's going to increase every year. It's going to be quite a lot of money sending to NSSF. So you need to seek opting out. Now that the yeah. law can allow, allow for that, yeah. All right, um, you're welcome. All right, I think uh, it's time to let go. Uh, people have their dinner. I, we apologize for to our Ugandans. Uh, apologies today. We really uh, dealt on Kenya, but we promise. By the way, for the Ugandans, next week our speaker is from Uganda. So yes, uh, I, I <laughs> excellent. 
<laughs> we will make sure that we are making up and not to say that that is not uh, for Kenyans. We are going to be discussing labor laws uh, yeah. that affect both uh, Uganda and Kenya. So don't worry about mm. it. Uh, how about our current savings? Are they safe? Yes, they are. Um, we, and, we, and, we are... Uh, and Grace, for the, for the Ugandans, um, we run an office in Uganda, Octagon Uganda Limited for Pension Administration. So in case you require service and request, request support there, please just get in touch and we'll be able to help you out. Yes, yes, Thank yes, you. yes. Uh, Octagon is in Uganda, it's in Zambia. Clever J, I don't know whether you're here from Zambia. Thank you very much. Um, okay. We are back to 15,000 again, my friend. We discussed. <laughs> We have discussed. Please get in touch with uh, Fred now from here going on. Uh, we will, he, yeah, we we'll support you quite a lot more. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, you can copy paste Fred's email and uh, number on the chat. Please get in touch with Fred for further details. I've seen a number of questions from the discussion that we had as we were starting. Uh, we will share the recording as it is the, the, the usual. Uh, this one is be longer, so you need to, to also sit down and do it. But I hope you have understood what is expected of you going forward. And uh, in case of any questions, uh, Fred is ready to support you. In case you're not able to reach him, call me. I will take you to him. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen a very nice uh, thing done by Zamara uh, uh, as an Excel sheet for calculations. Maybe it's something that you can consider to do. But okay. uh, yes, other than that, allow me to say that this webinar series is brought to you by Atara Solutions in partnership with uh, Profiles International, Balcon Housing, Stallion Construction Limited, um, Pathway Service Solutions, um, Weeklin, Panessa Training Institute, among IPM, among others. And uh, yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, Fred, maybe you can give us a line as your parting shot. Uh, I think, thank you. Thank you very much, Grace, for this opportunity to basically explain this. Um, I think for me, I, I would just like to encourage all of us as Kenyans basically to impress this. I know there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an appeal in the, in the Supreme Court, uh, but we, we are hoping that this will be put to rest because uh, we are the lowest saving, I think, over in the whole world in terms of uh, state scheme, and we need to do something about it. Yeah, thank you very much and really appreciate it. Thank you, Fred, Fred, for sparing your two hours with us this evening. Thank you so much. We appreciate and especially because you're not charging us for this one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, if you have not understood and you wish to have a one to one session, Fred will be at Pride in Azure or Azua in Nairobi on Friday. Is it in the morning? In the morning. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, there's a breakfast from meeting. Seven, from 7,000 bob from 7 30 yeah. a.m at 5000 bob but if you pay earlier so it's 3000 bob so right. please uh, take advantage of that uh let's move on together let's let's try and implement this i think we have simplified it as much And uh, please make oh god, it's me who disappeared. I think I, I think you are the one who disappeared. <laughs> oh dear lord, I'm wondering why Kevin is not talking. Okay, <laughs> I, somebody was calling and I'm tethering. <laughs> okay. okay, all right, okay. That's, uh, the, that's the reason. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, Frank, I was asking whether Kevin, you have anything to add? No, 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 no. absolutely, but uh. Uh, for the sake of everyone, thank you, Fred, once again for at least uh, shedding some light to us about NSSF and mm -hmm. putting us on the know on how yeah. to tackle uh, such question, such, yeah. such questions when and if they arise as we are going to now work on the payroll uh, come this month moving forward. Yeah. Thank you, Grace, and back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Fred. I cannot say thank you enough. Thank you for always thank making sense for Atara Solutions. We appreciate you and uh, we are honored thank to you. have you. And of course, to our audience, yeah. please get in touch with us. Please follow. Uh, somebody is asking for our WhatsApp link. Uh, Jacinta, please put the WhatsApp link on the chat. Uh, please like us, uh, like uh, Atara, our page on Facebook, Atara Solutions. 
Follow us on Instagram at Atara Solutions. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Get It Right with Atara Solutions. You can catch up if you have missed any of our webinars. They are all uploaded there. For those of you who are asking for a recording, then we will have to upload this one there. Uh, in the meantime, see you next week as we discuss matters with labor laws in Kenya. And uh, we will have a very, very renowned speaker from Kampala uh, who has practiced in both countries. So we will be sorted then. But uh, until then, it's good night. Please don't forget uh, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get it right to the Tara Solutions. Uh, see you on Friday. I will not be there, but uh, Kevin might be there. And uh, meet Taribu. up with members. Asante sana. Taribu. And uh, good night. Enjoy, enjoy yourself in Mombasa. Bye bye. I will. I will. I will. I will. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.